Welcome. So what I'm going to do is show you how to solve by factoring this uh, quadratic equation. And we're going to do the factoring. We notice that our a is absolute value of a is going to be greater than 1. But rather than using some of the box or uh, our uh, factor by grouping technique, AC method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use this by a little bit of guess and check. And once you kind of get used to factoring, you'll see that this is going to be kind of the preferred method because it's really the quickest. But you've got to get used to factoring and understand the process before you can really get to this stage. Um, the first thing I notice whenever I have my a is negative, when I'm going to apply this technique, I like to factor out that a. It just helps me visualize, and it's not going to change my answer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the negative. Therefore, I'm just going to be left with a 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. All right, so now I'm going to factor this because I can divide out this negative on both sides. So therefore, now I have a solution or an equation that's positive. All right. So when I'm breaking up this factored form, what I want to do is I'm going to take my a and I'm going to take my c. And I'm going to break each one of those down into their factors. Well, 3, thankfully, can only be broken down into 3 times 1. However, negative 8 can be broken down a couple different ways. And I'm going to break this down for all the positive and all the negatives. So it can be broken down to negative, one, negative 8 times 1, broken down to 8 times negative 1, negative 4 times 2, 4 times negative 2. So those are going to be all my possibilities. And what I'm going to do is that when I'm going to rewrite these factors, I'm going to write this in a couple different ways so that I can see all my possibilities. So the first one is we have is let's have our 3. So I'm just going to write some options. And remember, our goal is to write it in a factored form. So our factored form, we could have 3x times x. All right, And what we want to do is now we want to determine what are going to be our values that are going to multiply to give us c. Right? And these values of c, though, also we need to remember have to add up to negative 10. So we have a lot of different options here. I could write up, if you want to look at all the solutions, you could have negative 8 times 1. You could have 3x plus 1, x minus 8. And then you can just kind of go down the list with all of these different options. And you can see this could take very, very long, right? So I'm not going to expect you to write down all these. But let's just take a look at you know, what we could have and rewriting this, um, what we can work on. So when trying to find my middle term of uh, 10x, I need to be thinking about, all right, 3 times 1, that's going to give me a 3. And plus a negative 8, that's not going to give me a positive 10x. Um, and the 3 times the 1, that's going to give me a negative 24 plus 1. That's not going to give me anywhere close. And even if I switch these around, made that a positive and made that a negative, um, I'm still not going to get anywhere to 10. So the 8 and the 1 are not going to work. So let's go and look at a 4 and a 2. So I had 3x times x. Because remember, 3x times x is going to give me my um, first term, my positive value. Now I just want to see what's going to be closest that's going to give me over to my 10. Well, I could have, let's do negative 4 and positive 2. All right? And then I could also switch that around. I could also do 3x minus 2 times x plus 4. Now we could even go even farther, and we could even switch those around. But let's go and take a look, because I think we're getting somewhere close. 3x times negative 4 is negative 12. Negative 12, and what I'm doing is I'm multiplying, I'm adding my outside and my inner terms. 3x times negative 4 is negative 12. Plus 2x is a negative 10. So that's close, but I need a positive 10. But now if I see 3x times 4 is positive 12x, plus a negative 2x is going to give me 10x. So therefore, that's my winner. And that is what we call our factored form. And to make sure I chose this, because these are two values multiplied to give me a c, and these two values multiplied to give me my a. And all I need to do is just verify which outer and inner terms are going to uh, work so I can get back my solution. So now I have the factored form, and I can just now apply the zero product property to solve. So x equals 2 thirds, and I subtract 4. x equals negative 4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve by factoring. Thanks.